in in a in, in a um live simul, I would usually mix it up a little bit, but I want to see what kind of openings I get. Also, trying to get into positional games and simuls is is definitely uh, a, a good a good thing to do. Shorty says thanks for the simul. Thank you, Shorty. Thanks for playing, and thanks for everybody coming to the ICC. And uh, also, Talakin, we've played before. Vavdim seven three one. I think it's our first time. X X X X X X X X X X. I believe that's the first time. And uh, and Shorty. So Shorty's going to be a Queen's Gambit. Pasqualino. I believe we've we've played before, maybe more than once. And it looks like got some Queen's Gambits today. It's funny the 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 um, opening that I have the most trouble with seems to be the King's Indian in Simons, maybe because it gets so tricky and tactical. So I'll see. So far, no so far no King's Indians, which might be a good thing for me. And we'll see what we'll see what happens. I just finished watching basketball. I root for St. John's, which is a college team in New York, and they won an important game. So now hopefully I'll be able to do this Simon. Um XXX, I play D four, he played D six. And Sometimes I like to switch back into an E4 opening, so I'll switch back to the E4 contourist. Also, it's nice that the Zurich tournament is going on. I saw that Nakamura beat Fabiano today. I I thought Fabiano had a good position in that game and somehow lost the thread and over did, did it. But you'd have to say that Nakamura, Hikaru's uh, Gibraltar tournament, I thought was very nice. And... I, uh, looking at the Gibraltar tournament, I think it could be one of my uh, favorite Swiss tournaments. It's, it, it was just so strong. Pearl Hacker says, hi and good luck. Hi and good luck to you too. And Vadim731, a lot of, feels like a, a, a lot of Queen's Gambits today. Benny Wins is, um, I, I think might be a newcomer also. And back to Zebal. I think last month, Again, Zebwal, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been a Grunfeld. Uh, Dutch defense from DLH. I always like to see the Dutch defense. Um, I don't know. When, when, when I was a kid, Pet um, Petrosian was always nice to me. I, I played in some tournaments with him. And so I guess some of Petrosian's feelings about some openings rubbed off on me. I, I know Petrosian didn't think too much of the Dutch defense just because of the holes in the position that it makes. Okay, a couple of Slavs. And looks like a Queen's Indian or a Queen's Gambit from Contrast. And the Zurich tournament every year is a nice tournament. My only complaint about the Zurich tournament is that it's only got six players, so it goes by a little bit too fast. It's uh, these tournaments, like... Tata Steel is a big favorite. The uh, Vikings A tournament, I played there a few times. I really like that tournament. Okay, a few Dutch defenses. Kiera up from there. Um, D4, uh, Knight of Six, C4, D6. That could go into a King's Indian or an Old Indian. Shorty, I'll go for an exchange variation. Erroneous has played a Grunfeld. DLH, possibly a uh, stone wall. I, you know, white always Fianchettos. I like the Fianchetto lines for white in in almost all of the um, Dutch defenses. I think years ago I was having trouble with the Dutch defense, and then I, I just studied Korchnoi games, and that and that helped me. That helped me a lot. Um, I, I sat next to Korchnoi one time in a uh, tournament Lugano. And Korchnoi opened C4, and his opponent played F5. And I swear to God, I thought Korchnoi was going to spit on the guy. I was trying not to laugh, and then Korchnoi beat the guy in 20 moves. So I thought, maybe this is a good guy to study his games, and, and that's how that's how I learned the Dutch defense. So it's uh, studying, you know, find, finding people that are, are good positional players against certain openings. Uh, that's, the, that's, that's the best way to learn, and I, and I, and I still do that kind of thing. Still, still learn. Um, still studying and trying to get better, even uh, even though I'm an old geezer. Okay, some Slavs, erroneous uh, in 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 the Grunfeld. I'm gonna play my pet line, 
which is something takes the queen b3. If you look that thing up, you'll you'll find out that uh, me and my friend Norwegian Grandmaster John Tisdall were big fans of Oleg Romanishin when we were kids, and Romanishin had this line against the Grunfeld that he did pretty well with, and and we adopted it. And I've always played it, and I've and and I've always done all right with it. I mean, I don't think it's great, but it gets gets a position. And for some people, it might get into a position that's unfamiliar, which is uh, which which is always a good thing. You know, some make people play different sorts of positions. Okay, Nicholas Muller, um, he played a, 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 um, a very strange move order here, and now I think I can just get control of the center. So I like my position already on move five in that game. Uh, Pearl Hacker's gone for a regular Queens Indian. I always I got play A three a lot, the Petrosian variation. Erroneous, I'll play that Romanitian system I spoke about. Zebile, maybe we're heading for another Grunfeld, not sure yet. Grunfeld has become a good opening nowadays with a lot of the twenty seven hundred guys playing it. You have people like Geary and and, and Fabiano uh, and um a lot of a lot of Grunfeld players now. So the Grunfeld is is a pretty good opening for people to play and a lot of good stuff to study. Uh Nicholas Muller. Now he's done D six, so maybe with best play Nicholas might be able to get into something that resembles some sort of Bogo Indian position, maybe. Although with the with, with the dark square bishop still on the board. Um, White's gonna. I, I think I can look forward to a nice space advantage in this game. Uh, Bogo Indian from Mr. Neil Bishop to B four check. I always play Bishop to D two. It's funny. I think I think I've had some hard Bogo Indians in in in, in these simuls also. Uh, I believe last month was my was my best simul. Um, I think I only lost two games in that simul. Okay, Benny wins. We're gonna get into some kind of Benoni. Uh, a couple of Dutches, Leningrad Dutch. So I'm going to try to play like Korchnoi and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm happy to see a lot of exchange variation in the Queen's Gambit. I always felt pretty comfortable with that. Kiero Aprender has gone Bishop to G4, and I've always done well with Queen to B3, hitting B7 and preventing double pawns on F3. Although I don't think the double pawns in those kinds of positions are particularly tragic. I think that white gets the bishop pair, and that could be pretty decent. Okay, now, DOH has played bishop d6 in the stone wall, and I've worked on this position a lot with my students, and so I have to decide wh whether I should do a b3 here or, um, or knight c3. I think I'm going to go knight c3 and then maybe offer a, um, a trade of dark squared bishops on f4. I've seen uh, six-time champion Walter Brown play that kind of position and do pretty well. Uh, all the six X's looks like it's a uh, it's going to be a Philidor. Tartikova from Contrast. Tartikova, good opening, uh, good good variation of the queen's gambit for black to play. I mean, amazing amounts of world champions have played it in important spots. So, so that's 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 a uh, very nice opening to uh, to play. Okay, now Nicholas Moeller, I have to see the way he's playing is that at, at what moment do I play e5 and try and drive him back? Um, I think the, if I do it now, he might be able to do some sort of thing with knight g4 and maybe knight c5 and trade the queens. I think I would like to keep the queens on the board. So let me uh, just try rook to e1 and, and then see if I could get that in later. Okay, Benny wins. I, uh, he gave me the option to go into a Schmidt Benoni, but I always like the Benoni with the pawn on c4. It feels better to have the pawn on c4 than on c2 to me. Uh, more uh, control of the center. And... Uh, Kiera Aprender get one bishop f3, so I play queen f3. No double pawns. Bishop pair already. I I feel you know pretty good about that. Uh, Doctor Strange move has attacked my queen with bishop to e6, uh, and I just retreat queen to c2. And now Nicholas Muller 
this is the moment I have to see. Do I want to play e5 here? Still, those th those those lines with knight g4 are bothering me a little bit. So I think that I'm I'm wondering if I should play h3 and just and just uh, prevent it like that. And I think I'm gonna have a space advantage no matter what happens in in, in this game. Uh, Shorty has attacked my bishop. I just no no bishop takes f6 too early. Just drop back with bishop h4. So that my my exchange variations are going okay. Pro hacker, I I don't know. You know, I mean, bishop e7. I always felt that the moves that black had to play in this Petrosian system. I feel like black has has to almost play d5 by force. There's some minor lines with g6 or knight e4, but on bishop e7, I think I just go d5, and it's another game with a space advantage. Uh, with those dev normal developing game uh, versus Talikin. Now, the Talikin, I, I seem to remember something about Talikin beating me in some sort of Dutch defense thing. Uh, so I'm going to have to see. I remember some kind of attack all of a sudden with his queen heading to h5. So I, I want to be really careful about that kind of situation. Uh, let's see. Pasqualino's gone b6. Now, I, I wonder how I, how I should treat this position. I'm almost thinking about going e4 right away here. Just something different looking instead of the regular development. Uh, Dr. Strange move has gone c5. And I think now this starts to look familiar also. And let me see what sort of moves can I play here. I, I, I'm... I'm looking at uh, something like e3, and it's a question, can he take the pawn, or should I just go pawn takes pawn? And I recall some sort of situation with some kind of knight c4 and queen a5, and I'm not exactly sure how that turned out. It, 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 it feels like if I get canceled in that position, it's going to be very good for me. So I'm wondering, rook to d1 is kind of an interesting move also. Uh, threatening, threatening pawn takes pawn, and if he goes, bishop takes. I, I, I don't know. He can, he has to be careful what he does in those positions, where, where he, where he gives me this uh, bishop pair. I don't know. I mean, rook to, rook to d one. I'm, I'm, I'm very tempted to do it. Um, and, 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 and the question is, e takes d four, knight takes d four, bishop takes d four, rook d one, something like that. You know, and, and, and just to see. So so that's that's sort of an unclear position. Pawn takes pawn. I think I did the other time. So I'm stuck here on this one for a little bit uh, trying to figure out because I think it's already at the first crucial moment in the game against Dr. Strange move. Pawn takes pawn is... I, I don't know. Knight c4, rook d1, and then knight d4. Also, it doesn't look bad. Um, I don't know. I I think I'm going to try pawn to e3 and 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 uh, and and see how that one goes. Uh, just have to look out for for some tricks. All right, I'm going to try pawn to e3 and try and come out with fast development this time. A little bit different than than what I did the other time. Okay, uh, Kiera Prender has gone uh, c6. Now, interesting play for me. There's all kinds of weird moves here. I sort of like d5, just because I think black wants to play d5. So I I think that's 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 one thing there. Also it ties his knight back to b8, and I can develop knight c3. I think putting the pawn on d5 gives me some kind of nice space advantage. Bishop f4 in one of the Dutch games. Uh, Contras has played knight bd7. I think queen c2 is correct for me. Uh, with those, I'm going to castle and then go for a fast e4. I'm in the Philidor against XXX. Just regular development. No big deal there yet. So, uh, and now Mr. Neal has played c6. I, I, it's an interesting move he played. I, I, I wonder if I could take advantage of, of his move by playing by playing maybe c5 to make a hole on d6 
Um, it's inter- I, I, I think I'm going to try. I, I think I'm going to give that a try. I'm curious about that. I mean, it could be that I'm overdoing it a little bit, but I want to. I want to see if I if I could do that and see what happens. Okay, so uh, everything's moving. I haven't hung anything yet. Nobody else has hung any, every, anything yet. Looks like Ze- Zeb oil. Um, all right, Rook C A from Nicholas Moeller strikes me as a strange looking move. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna try to play e5 now, and see if I can push him back, and then maybe get into some kind of attacking position from from uh, my strong center. Okay, Talkin has gone queen to e8, and I think I'm gonna try knight to d5 in this one. I remember ha- having some games with that a long time ago. B6 from Litho, so I'll just play e4. Jester Fianchettoed in this queen c2 Slav and. I, I don't know. I mean, when, when you have a, a pe- nice path for your bishop already, I, I thought just bishop e7 he should do. I, I think, or, or bishop to d6. I think that's where the bishop belongs. So that seems to me more routine development. Sometimes you go g6 and you put the bishop in a worse spot. And also it's a tempo too. Okay, Contouris is going for a very solid position. Okay, Pascalino. Bishop to b7. Now, in, in the Pascalino game, I just have to be careful a little bit of when does he get c5 in, because that, that could help him a lot with the development. Um, I think I'm going to go, but if I go bishop f4, he could go bishop b4 check, make me, make me go backwards. I think I'll go bishop to d3 and, uh, and just develop. Okay, Dr. Strange move knight c6. And now... I'm, I'm thinking that, all right, I'm looking at pawn takes pawn, of course. And and if he does that knight to c4 thing that, that he does, and his idea is to just get me on the b2 square and with his queen on a5 on that diagonal with the crossfire from the bishop on g7. So I have to see what's, what is the right way for me to do this here. Pawn takes pawn, knight c4. Um, and I don't know, uh, let's see, bishop to b5 is maybe not a bad move for me here either. Still, some, some pawn sack stuff could happen. Uh, interesting game, there are some positions where my king could get stuck on e1, so I might not be too happy about that. So, I would say the main move I'm looking at here is... I, I'm I'm looking at pawn takes pawn knight c4 and trying to make that one work. Uh, a little scared that uh, knight c4. I don't want to take it. His bishop on c4 keeps me from castling. Um, bishop to b5 might be some kind of idea just to get me out of out of the center very fast. And then on pawn takes pawn, I'm relying a lot on pins with the queen and several other spots. So. Uh, not, not so sure about that. Also, uh, you never know if a queen sack could come in where he could take on c3 and I take d8. And if, if he's bothering, he, he might be able to keep me in, in the center with that kind of idea also. So, I'm um, I'm trying, trying to figure out what this deal is here. Um, still, still, still thinking about pawn takes pawn. I, I, I don't know. I'm having trouble with this one. I think I'm going to go pawn takes pawn because it feels right and then see if I can fix the b2 square afterwards. Okay, rookie eight. So that was a, that was a tough one there. I mean, okay, uh, Mr. Neal has gone c6. So that now now I have to see. Is, is he ever going to try to blast me with... I guess I'll go knight c3 now. So, so on c6, actually, he went d5, and I should take on passant, of course. I didn't think of that. <laughs> We're teaching little kids and telling them, you got to remember on passant, and I almost forgot it myself. Contouris is going for a real international chess tournament, Queen's Gambit, where he's accepting to be slightly worse, but most likely a draw could happen. Okay, now I have to be – now, Dr. Strange move is, is – uh, is going to try to come out fast. Um, 
Rook to D1. It, 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 I guess, let me try this. Rook to D1. And then on Queen to A5, can I go Knight to B4? Interesting stuff. Okay, I think I'm going to give that a try out. Looks good. At least it's, you know, some development. And it's the kind of position, if I get my king out of the center, I think I'm going to be happy about it. Okay, the Art... Arturito Gagti game. I'm going to try to follow a nice Korchnoi game that I saw against Dolmatov. Uh, small master has traded, uh, offered me a trade at Bishops. Uh, not bad. Solid play. Lithos has gone, has canceled. And now I play Bishop F4 in these kinds of positions. I've also... Uh, Queen C2 is maybe an interesting move too, and I'm gonna. I I, I think I'm gonna try Queen to C2, get my Queen out of the way of his Bishop, and see what's up with that. Uh, Contras, I go Bishop D3. I don't mind him going Knight takes Bishop there, because it's always uh, slightly better. And now, uh, D H uh, L. Um, if I play E3. Protect, try to protect my king a little bit. Um, Kiera Aprender, I don't know about his move with e6 there. That's a risky looking business. If I can I can I snatch a pawn here with pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn and queen b7. Okay, he's got good development, but I don't know if there's any weakness in my position to point to that. So I'm just going to go pawn takes pawn and see if I can snatch a pawn. Okay, every opening sort of looks normal so far. The Grunfelds are, are under control. Um, my uh, the, the two or three exchange variations in, in the um, Queen's Gambit, I think I like the way they look at this point. Uh, Benny wins. Benny's playing a Benoni with with his bishop on e7, which you know, which really isn't that great because of how cramped it could be. Uh, let's see. Nicholas Muller got pushed back with uh, with with um, e five ninety eight. Now now the question is 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 if he cracks me with c five, is that going to be is that going to collapse my center? Got to be a little careful of overextending in these kinds of positions. I think queen e two looks uh, like a decent move for me. Just to just to, mainly to stay out of the way of queen trades. I always remember the try to remember the rule of space. You know, you don't want to trade pieces when 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 you're when you're in a situation with space. Okay, now what's Vadim up to? Can I just play F3 in these kinds of positions and try for a strong center? Uh, F3 looks like a decent move for me. Trying to play for E4 later in the Benny wins game. He played A6, and I always go A4 automatically, whether I need to or not. And that's, you know, that's a, it's an interesting question whether, you know, whether I should do that or not. Okay, uh, Contras has gone bishop to g4 and, and I, I, threatening to take and I'll play knight to d4, strong knight on d4. Okay, uh, Pascalino has gone knight f6 and now where do, I guess I have to drop back to e2. Pro hacker, it's another position where I feel like I, I'm going to get a nice space advantage. Uh, just develop with bishop to d3. That's in that Petrosian system where he didn't play d5. Uh, let's see. Now, Benny wins. I think, where, uh, where do I put my bishop? Bishop to e2 or bishop to d3? I think d3 looks feels right there. Lindos has gone rook c8. He's preparing his uh, C5 idea. Um, a, 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 a strange looking move from, from Lux to Turner. Rook to B8. What happens if I just go Bishop to F4 there? Uh, isn't, that, uh, uh, isn't that a nice developing move for me? Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, knight DF6 from DH, DLH. And then I'll put my knight into E5. Bishop check from Pascalino. Uh-huh. 
I think that's uh, I, I think that's a good idea on his part. Now, if I trade bishops, he might get some c5 thing in. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to try king f1. It's a little suspicious looking. And now against Kiera up and there, I think I should snatch a pawn. And then my next job would be just to get myself uh, developed, and then and then that should be okay. Uh, Benny wins. I have a decision here. Which way to take back? But no only position with a bishop on e7. Which way to take back? E pawn or d pawn? Uh, that's a you know excellent question here. I, I mean, c pawn has more. I think I'm going to take it back with the c pawn. Okay, Contouris has played knight to uh, e6. Looks very he, very solid play on his part. Very solid. And I'm going to see, I'm going to go, but, all right, I'm going to try queen a4 because I want to see if I can get my queen to a4, but I don't know. He goes queen to f6 or something, not really sure. I, I don't know if I'm getting any kind of advantage if I castle. If it, 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 it wouldn't be much, I can tell you that. Um, so let me see what to do here. Any tricky stuff. I, I don't, I have to be, something like knight f5 wouldn't be good. Um, I think that, and knight b3, he might be able to go d4. I, I think I'm just going to have to castle, and if it becomes a draw, that's the way it is. Okay, so knight, uh, Vadim's developing. Now, I don't know if Vadim's queen is going to be so happy on c7 in some of these variations. Um, I guess I'll just go king to h1. Uh, continuing to prepare e4. Queen e8 from dlh, uh, getting ready to transfer the queen over to the king side for some attacking chances, perhaps. Uh, d5 from Kiera up and there. Okay, what is he? Is what what is he trying to do to me now? I want just making sure my queen doesn't get caught up in there. Uh, my queen doesn't look so bad there yet. yet so I think I'm gonna play g3 and just try to come out fast benny wins in a benoni position I, I feel like i'm happy to have a protected pass pawn strong center contourist like i said really don't have much of an advantage there mr neil um he's got uh, i got a good bishop versus a bad bishop situation i'm trying to keep him bottled up here should i go e5 is a good question for me Castle and queen side, I don't know, that looks a little bit nuts. I mean, I think that probably I should just be content with a normal-looking move here. My only question for him is, uh, is is he threatening to go c5? All right, I'm going to go e5 myself because I, I think it shuts in his bishop and it just feels like the right move in that kind of position. Okay, Pascalino's castled. Mm -hmm. And now I guess I'm going to see... What to do here? I'm 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 gonna go bishop to g5, maybe try to bother him with the pen a little bit and just try to develop my king on f1 is not happy. But I'll try and see if I could cancel by hand at some point and and see what kind of deal I could I could come up with there. Um Vadim, I'm threatening I wonder what moment do I go e5? Now Vadim's knight is on b6. Is knight does knight c4 ever bother me? I I mean this is this is a good question. Uh, I'm thinking if he if he goes knight c4, he'll be forking my pawns. Do I have to go bishop takes knight? Is some is that something I want to do? So I I'm not sure. I mean I could go b3 and stop it. I don't know. Rook c1 feels like the right move to me against Vadim. Queen c7 from erroneous. Uh, I guess I should just castle. That's in that, in in one of my in, in my pet lines with, with these uh, Grunfelds. Okay, Knight F D seven from Kiero Aprender. What's what's he trying to do to me here? Um, I could take his rook. Somebody is challenging me to a game in the middle of the simul. I have to say no. Um, I'm 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 looking at if I take the rook, he gets Queen C seven in. I, I mean, I feel like I could almost take that rook. I, I think I'm going to wait a second and play a move like 
Bishop to h3. Looks nice. Uh, hitting e6 with a tempo. Queen b6 trade from Arturito in, in the um, in, in the uh, Leningrad Dutch. I, I think I'm going to turn it down because I think Queen c, the trade of, of uh, I don't want to trade. I could leave a queen there and let him trade, and I don't know if he wants to do that. But I think his queen is better placed actually on d8. So in a little bit, of, I feel like he, you know, by offering a trade of queens and me declining that, he might have misplaced his queen a little bit. Okay, let's see what's happening here from Contrast. Um, queen, he just went queen to b4, which looks like a uh, looks looks like a good move, hitting the pawns, and he's threatening to take my d pawn, and now. I don't know. I'm 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 thinking about just going h3 and trying to make his bishop move out. So I'll play h3. Pascalino's going h6, hitting my bishop. I guess I, I'm. I, I mean, I'm, I'm. If I go bishop to h4, is he? Can he really go g5? Is a question. I'm I'm willing to take that chance. It's a messed up position as it is. Okay. DLH's queen is out on h5, but I, I'm just going to send him back, his knight backwards with f3. And then if I have to defend myself with something like g3, it looks fine. Uh, Benny wins. Uh, let's see. Bishop to g5 pinning. I don't know if he ever wants to move his queen off of there, so it's nice to do bishop g5. If he chases my bishop around to g3, I think I'm happy about that. His king would be a little bit open. And now I just have to see what uh, what to do with Mr. Neal. Um, if I take on d5 and he takes back with the e pawn, it opens up his bishop. So I don't think I want to do that. Um, I think I'm just going to go bishop to d3 and, and play normal moves there and point things at his king's side. Okay, uh, a5 from xxx in the Philidor. Um, I think my time is okay in, in all of the situations. I don't, I don't think anything terrible is happening to me yet as far as the time pressure goes. Erroneous, I think, is doing a good job with... With, with how he's developing his pieces. Um, I guess, I, I don't know, I'll play bishop f3 or something. I, I don't really think that I have any big advantage there. Uh, let's see, DHL retreated in 96, and now I, I guess I'm going to try c5 and expand on the side. Queen c7 from Lithos, uh, going, for, going for the c5 push. As uh, as as I thought, and now I have to see: is there any way for me to uh, to stop it? Maybe my rook was better. Maybe my rook could have been better on another square there. Okay, uh, b3, some kind of development like that for me looks looks decent. Okay, Vadim did not go knight c4. He played a6. He's a little bit afraid of of knight to b5, but I I don't know that he had to be. So here here comes the big question for me. Um, at what moment do I want to play e4? You know, I mean, then he gets these knight g4 ideas, hitting e3 and trading bishops. So that's you know that's tough to to see. Um, I'm, I'm sometimes I should just go bishop f2. Also, knight f4 to take his light square bishop should, could happen. I think I'm just going to go bishop f2, just in case. I don't think he's playing for c5, but it looks like a good move to get out of the way of some stuff. All right, Mr. Neal went c5, and I could give him an isolated pawn. I think I'm just going to... I think in this position, I'm just going to castle. And... I think his position, he's doing okay there. I mean, I, I'm a little better, I think. Okay, now, um, DHL, no no funny moves with the queens. Okay, I'm going to expand on the queen's side. And now, Kier Opren there has gone king to f7, which pins his knight. And I think I'm just going to castle. That rook is still hanging in there. Sooner or later, i got to be able to take it. Rookie eight from Jester, and now is knight d six annoying? 
I don't know. Um, it makes him move his rook. I, I'm not really sure what. I, I I really don't think I want to take that bishop down there. I I think I'm just going to develop something like bishop f4 looks nice. Just a routine development back to Talkin and that Dutch. Uh, XXX. We're we're in the um, Philidor defense. G5 from Pascalino. Uh huh. All right. Well, we got to see. And knight a6 from Arturito Galaki. Okay, does does he ever bother me with knight b4? I don't think so. But the question is, do I want to go a3? And if, if I go a3, will he ever bother my c pawn? I, I think a3 looks like a decent move no matter what in that position. Okay, small master has gone b6, which sometimes feels a little loose. I don't know. I thought he should just develop with the knight. C5 from Shorty. Uh, Bishop C5 from Quiero Aprender. And now the rook is hanging. Still the rook is hanging. Queen takes. Queen C7. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's just me. or I, I feel like I'm being very lazy about not taking that rook. I, I, I mean, it just feels like somehow taking that rook's got to be the right thing to do. But, I mean, it's not running away just yet. So, all right, let me go knight to c3. If worse comes to happen, and worse, I think he can offer me a queen trade. And and I don't think I would be all that unhappy uh, with it. Okay, bishop h5 from contrast. And now I want to see. I was thinking of offering a, a trade on c5, but... Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to offer Contras a trade on of Queens on the C5 square and see if he wants to repair my pawns for me. That would be uh, an interesting thing to do. All right, I'm going to go into D6 now with, with my knight with Jester. Maybe because I, I can gain some time on his queen or something. Um, Mr. Neil Castled. Uh, let's see, so now I'm, I'm looking at things like pawn takes c5. All right, I'll go pawn takes c5. I'm just happy that his bishop is on c8 there. And Kier up and there with uh, rook to e8. Now, I, I, I don't know. I'm getting tempted by I'm getting tempted by stuff like knight takes d5 also. Looks nice. Uh, also tempted by stuff like... I mean, if, if, if I take on e8, all right, I, I think that, I think that now I'm going to take on a8. It's got to be right to take on a8 now. Okay. So I feel like that game is pretty interesting game and, and I kind of like my position. I, I feel like I, I, I'm winning now. Benny wins played a good move. Bishop e7 threatening. Knight takes d5. I'll just drop back. Bishop g3. Bishop d6 attacking my h2 pawn from Vadim. I, I don't know really if he could take that pawn, but I think bishop to g1 is always a decent defense anyway. Also, it gets out of the way of, of, uh, of knight takes g4 and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I have Lux to turn a bottled up pretty good, I think. I think I'm, I think I like my position in that game. Castle's queenside from Dark to Strange Move. Wow. Putting big pressure on on uh, put it yep putting pressure on d4 already and trying some diagonal stuff. So I have to see what what kind of moves can I can I do here now. That that's uh, I, I I didn't think of that it, and you know and it looks like it's it's a very tough move to deal with because he's going to try and collapse me. But his king will always be in a weird shape. So I think I'm just going to try bishop to e2. And just try and get my king out of there. All right. Kiero Aprender, I'm going to play knight takes d5. And I feel like I'm just about winning that game. Rookie 8, good good play from Aronius. Not bad. Very solid. I'm just going to develop. I mean, I think his, you know, his position is absolutely okay there. Um, Jester has played... Rook to d8, and like I said, I don't want to take that bishop. Uh, knight to g5 to bother his f7 pawn. Mm, I I think I'm going to go c5 and cement my knight into d6. Short 
shorty with uh, rook, rook to c8. And now I'm just going to play, I think knight, knight to f4 or something looks like a decent move for me. At what point should I take his bishop? Okay, uh, now, Mr. Neal, I'm leaning towards just rook to c1. Looks like a nice sort of move. Just try to have some advantage. Benny wins, defended his uh, his uh, e-pawn with his queen. And now I'm wondering if ever, do I ever want to go f4? That's, that's what I'm going to wonder. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking he was trying to go c4. So I'm going to go bishop to c4 to stop it. Also, aiming that bishop on a diagonal might be a nice thing to do. Okay, uh, Jester has played b6, so he's trying to get himself unbottled. Yeah, not not a bad move. Um, and now, if I go, let's let's say let's say I go knight to, I'm going to go knight to c4 and see where he puts his queen. Okay, a5 from Contras. Contras is playing, you know, n n very nicely. He's going after. He's going after my pawns. I'm wondering when if, should I go g4? Does that does that do anything to his pawn structure? Is what I'm wondering here. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to try g4, just to trade bishops on g6 and see if something's up with that pawn structure. Okay, Benny wins has gone knight to d7. Uh huh. So I, 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 I'm not certainly not going for f4 now. But if his knight goes to b6 later, I'm, I'm going to play a safe move, king to h1. Just get out of the way, and then see what he's up to. Queen b5 from Talikin. Mm hmm. And I remember some games with the, where people played knight to g5 and went into e6, let the bishop take. Knight a5 from, from Erroneous. Uh, looks, looks, looks like a good move. Uh, he's using the c4 square. And now I'm wondering, do I, uh, are, there, are there any fancy moves here for me? I, I, I don't know. I mean, knight b5, I kind of doubt it. Uh, Queen to b4, I have to be careful at e5. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe all right, Maybe I should do queen to b4. Give queen b4 a try out here. But I think he's playing, I, I think he's doing a nice job there, playing some sol nice solid moves. All right, now, Jester, uh, can I bottle him up here? This is, the, this is the question. Pawn to b4, I chased his queen away. And now I'm going to go pawn to b4 and just keep everything there. I want to keep the queens on against Mr. Neal. My my rook on c3, I'm wondering if it's ever going to swing over to, to h3 in some variations. Okay, e5, well, now let's see what's happening. Uh, I'm threatening, I'm, I'm trying to keep Lux Eterna bottled up. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I keep looking to see at what moment, if ever, can he play uh, something like uh, c5 to, to get it, open up his position a little bit. And then I have to see, you know, uh, how, how am I trying to bottle him up? I think I'm going to go queen to c2 there, get my queen out of the way. All right, let's see what's happening here with, uh, with Contourist. Uh, I think I'm going to go king to g2 and stomp rook f3 stuff. Uh, small master, I feel like I'm working on his c pawn a little bit. Uh, rook e8 from, from Arturo Galanchi. So is, is he really, is he trying to play e5? And if he is, um, how do I take the steam out of e5? That's what this opening is all about. Um, I think I'm. I think I'm going to try rook to d1 there and see if he wants really wants to play e5 against small master. I have some slight pressure against his c pawn on the open file. Erroneous has played knight to. Uh, let's see. Er Erroneous has gone rook to c8. Looks looks like normal play. 
uh, trying to bother me on trying to bother me on the C4 square. Uh, I'm looking at I'm, I'm I'm looking at some tricky stuff. I, I I really don't know if it works. Looking at moves like C4 or some kind of things to deflect. I don't know. I'll try it. I mean, let's 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 give it a try out and see. And Queen D8 from Vadim. Vadim has gone Queen C7 and Queen back to D8. Can that be a good thing for him? And now I'm thinking I should, I, I've prepared E4 for a long time. I think I should just do it. It makes sense. And also to try it with, with, with the fork. Okay, uh, Lithos has gone C5. That's that, that looks like a good break. And now I don't know. I, I'm I'm I know these guys. They're always doing these D5 pawn sacrifices, but I I don't know if it works here. All right, I've seen people do this D5 pawn sack and do all right with it. So I'm I'm gonna try it also. Shorty played uh, A6, and I guess I just drop Bishop back to B1. Sometimes it's useful to make the battery. XXX H3 H6, and then I go H3. And C5 from Pasqualino. All right. So, well, I, I, I think I'm, I think I'm going to send Pasqualino's bishop off here with, uh, with pawn to A3. That feels like the right thing to do. That bishop on A5 looks like it's a, I'm, I'm hoping it's a little bit out of it. Bishop A2 against cool. Benny wins. That's the one where I have a protected pass pawn. I think I'm happy about that situation. Knight c6 from Talikin. So the last time, I think Talikin really murdered me. So this time, I feel like I've put together some kind of decent position. I, I don't know that his pieces are going to be able to mate me in this kind of position like he did the other time. Okay, queen d5 from Mr. Neal. And now I have to see. I, I, I should probably get my queen out of the way. I'm looking at uh, just simply queen to e3. Uh, um, that looks all right. Looking at sacrifices too, and, and I'm wondering, well, I mean, should I put my queen on g5 so it's close to his king? This is this is something else that that I really uh, should think about. Um, so what what is my what is my deal here? If I if I go let's let's say I go queen to g5. I think I think I'm gonna go queen to g5. Although I mean queen to e3 has all kinds of things. Yeah, all right. Queen to e3 was my first thought. I guess I'll stick with it. And I don't really think that he could take the e2 pawn, the a2 pawn there. Okay, so now what's happening here? I I, I like my game with d l h. I think I'm just Normally, positionally better. Um, do I want to? Is this the kind of position where I want to offer a trade of queens? Yeah, why not? I think I'm positionally better, so a queen trade makes some sense. Rookie eight from XXX. And now, let me see. Uh, how should I develop here? Trying to see is some, sometimes I'm trying to make attacks on F7. I'm going to try queen C4. Just to make his rook go back. Okay, Lux Eterna. Um, I can I can make him go h6. Do I want to do that? And and, and I got a nice. I, I think my game with Lux Eterna. I can go knight to g5 and and force holes on his king's side. That's got to be the right thing for me to do. Queen e6 from the small master. Well, you know my pressure stays on c6, and then he's got another pawn to worry about. So. I think that queen trade has to be right for me. Okay, Lido says has played e5. Well, he didn't take the good news is he didn't take my d5 pawn sack. That's the good news for me. So, but the bad news for me is he's got a he's got a very strong center. And I don't know. Do I want to play something like? I don't think he. I, I don't think he's playing f5. So I, I think I'm just going to go bishop to b2 and try and point my bishops at his king's side and see what that situation is about. Okay, uh, Pascalino. <sighs> uh, 
Thinking about H4 to open him up. Thinking about Rook to D1. I think I like Rook to D1. Some protection of the D4 square. Whoa. Benny wins. Benny wins played F5. What is that? Does D6 just win? I don't think I need to think about that one. Oh, Benny, what happened there? Always be careful when there's a bishop lining up, you know, on the same diagonal as a king. And always look out for discovered checks. So that was a real situation. Okay, Contreras has played rook f4. Yep. And I'm going to play rook to d1. I, I mean, rook endings. Uh, people have done simuls with me before. You know me. I think all rook endings are drawn. <laughs> of course, that's... You know, that's a little bit of a ridiculous thing to say, but um, it's it's not true that all rook endings are drawn, but quite a, quite a lot of them happen, you know, even when with, with material situations. All right, um, small master. Now, which rook should go to, to C1? I think the F rook, because maybe I want A4 at some point. So let's pressure that pawn. Okay, uh... DLH has decided to keep the queens on, and I'm going to start my queenside stuff, and Mr. Neal has snatched a pawn, which I didn't think he could do, but he did it, and then who knows, he might be snatching another one afterwards, so the big question here is that how, how, do, I, uh, how do I make an attack here? Queen to e4, provoking some g6 thing. Let's see, what else to do? Uh, I didn't think he could take that, but he took it. All right, so let's see. Bishop to b1. Queen e4 provokes, provokes this some kind of thing. Knight, knight to g5. What about knight to g5? And if he goes h6, what happens there? Do I have a continuation? Don't really see a continuation there. Um, looking at other kinds of things to do. I don't know. Queen c5 on the other side of the board doesn't seem right. Queen e so queen e4 g6 feels like what I should concentrate on. Some crazy stuff with the queen and the rook lined up. I wouldn't be at all surprised if some kind of sack happened here. I mean. You know, I mean, uh, some some sort of bishop h7, knight g5 thing. But don't see how to make it work yet. Bishop takes, king takes, knight g5, king back, queen there. I don't know. It's a little nuts, but I think I'm going to give it a try out with the three pieces. Nothing there is king. One, one, let me give it a let me give it a shot. Okay, rook to b4 from contrast. Mm-hmm. And if I just go rook to c2, what's that? Rook takes d5, rook takes d5, rook b2. That I, I don't think I should be doing that. So I'm just going to go rook to c2 and protect my stuff. Okay, now I got to see what, there's a little bit of a hole on f6 for Lux a Turner. So I'm going to put my knight on e4 and just keep an eye on that f6 square the whole time. C5 from Nicholas Muller, and do I just want to come out with Bishop F4 and just take my time here? I mean, I like my position. His pieces are just really uh, kind of ineffective there. All right, Rook takes D4 from Dr. Strange move, and now uh, I'm, I'm looking at uh, me castling. Oh, no, I have to take. My bishop is saying... So I'll take on d4, and then I'll castle. Bishop e5, erroneous, is hitting my my pawn with check. So uh, let's see. My h pawn is going with check. Do I have any tricky stuff? I'm looking at knight b5. Um, I don't know if that's working at all. Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, well, first of all, my, my a rook is hanging, so I can't go knight b5 because of that. So I think that I should probably go h3, but is bishop to d6 a big idea? All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go h3, and bishop d6 might be a good idea for him. Uh, I'm not really sure about it. 
tr- going into some kind of uh, formations here. Um, Contrast went there. I, the game with Contrast probably is just going to wind up being a draw and a rook, typical rook ending, I think. Because he's going to go rook b5 at some moment and just, and just all the pawns go off. Right, so I go a three. That one looks pretty, pretty drawish kind of thing. All right, knight to d four, knight seven f six from Jester. Um, and now I guess I'm gonna go knight to d e five. Try and tie him up a little bit. His bishop on c eight is just not a good thing in that position. And try and do this. Okay, so Doctor Strange move. I'm, I, be, I better at castle before knight b2 happens. Okay, small mouse has defended his c pawn, and I guess I guess I'm going to go knight f4 because that will force king f7. Rookie one. I mean, so far. So far, I, I don't know if I won that one game where I got the D6 discovered check. You know, it's, in these simuls, I, I usually, I, I never I, I never win the games. I usually lose a few before I win one. It's happened, it's happened a, a number of times. Queen D2, just developing. Knight H5 and DLH. Um, okay, if he trades that knight, will knight H3 ever bother me? That's what I'm wondering. I don't, I don't think so. So, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take it on h5, and then continue my queenside stuff. I think contour is probably just the drawn position. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sharpening it up in a few cases here. All right, now, dlh. Do I just want to play pawn to b5? Always on the lookout for knight h3. It doesn't hurt me yet. It, you know, I mean, and if he goes king h8 and rook g8, well, I have to be awake for that. All right, now, where do I put my rooks against small master? Probably rook to c4. Maybe no, no, knight to d3, just threatening knight e5. But then he goes knight to d7. Uh... A4, I think I'm going to go rook to C4. Knight to D7 from Jester. Mm -hmm. And now I, I, I feel like I'm going to put a rook on B1 and, and, and try to keep Jester from developing. Okay, this is my crazy sack against Mr. Neal. I, I did it, so let's go. Knight G5 check. Um, now, with contourist rooks the way they are, do I have any chances here to do something? Uh, let me see. All right, I'm going to double rooks on the D file and then just see see what ha if I could drum up some business there. All right, DLH is sacking a pawn. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not so excited about taking this pawn. I could go H4 and send his knight back. I could go f4. I for some reason I for some reason I like f4, but I don't know what should he do then? Should he trade knights or what's the situation there? And if I take a pawn, will knight h3 bother me a lot? All right, I think I'm just going to take a pawn on c6. Okay, Zebulon is. Uh, my D pawn is hanging. I I don't know. I, these 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 positions you always get these things going on. All right now. So here's the question from DLH: T Do I take this pawn? Do am I that brave? And do I survive with King to H one? All right, I'm going to take it. Litos has gone uh, Rook to E eight. Uh huh. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna try knight to h4, see if I can get into f5. Getting out of the way of bishop e6 check type stuff also. Alright, now so Mr. Neal just played king to h8. King to g8, sorry. And if I play queen to h3, 
He doesn't have any defensive H7, I don't think. All right, so he's going to have to move his rook. And then we'll see what kind of business happens after that. Okay. Uh, knight takes now against Lux Eterna. What is he? He just went bishop to c8. Mm -hmm. And I want to see if uh, I'm going to try queen to d2. Not too subtle, but uh, kind of a typical thing. All right. Bishop to a6 from DOH. Okay, now I have to put my rook somewhere. Where do I put it? Rook to d1. And, okay, rook to d1. And some development coming out here for small master. Small master, I feel like I, I might not have done this the right way. Because um, he, he, he's starting to get some sort of play here. Try and keep him from doing C5 stuff. Aha, uh -huh. Contras did rook to, yeah, Contras did well. He went, he put his rook on the seventh to stop some stuff, which is, which is absolutely uh, the correct thing to do. And now I have to see, can I make any kind of slight pressure here? Let's try rook to d5. King h8 from DLH, and I just go king to h1. Bishop d7 from Jester. And, okay, I, I think I like bishop to f1. Let's send his queen somewhere. Let's see where it goes. All right, now, Mr. Neal, rook to d8. And now, how do I want to do, do this? Queen f7, queen h7, check, check. Take on g7, threatening f7, mate. That has to be good. And I hope I didn't mouse slip. <laughs> okay, now what's happening with uh, queen... Queen c7 is interesting in in the game with Nicholas Moeller. I, I mean, I, I, I like my position a lot in this game. I'm just wondering, do I go, will knight b5 ever do anything for me? Knight b5, looking at stuff like knight b5, bishop takes, where does his queen go? All right, I'm going to try, I'm going to try knight to b5. Rook c5 from Contras, uh-huh. And let's see, so if if I just hang around there, I don't see what I'm doing, so I'm going to go king to g3, probably probably offering a draw there at some point is not really a terrible idea. Let's see what's happening here with, uh, with Jester. Queen to a4, trying to put some pressure on his position from the side. Some queen traps could happen. Okay, in, in the Nicholas Muller game, can I go, if I go bishop takes g6, pawn takes g, f takes g6, rook takes, he gets rook takes f4. And, mm. So, all right, so if I get rid of this bishop with a tempo, let's say, I well, man, I got a lot of ideas here. Bishop to e4 is interesting. Bishop h6. Knight g5. Okay, bishop h6. Let's take a look at that one. Knight takes e... If he goes pawn, takes e5. I think I'm going to try bishop h6. That was some serious thinking there. Okay. Uh, Lux Eterna. Should I trade knight takes d5 and make, make him put that other knight there? I think so. A pin from Vadim, okay, and now if I go e5, what happens with e5, and then maybe make a battery, unpin with queen d3 or something, okay, knight takes c4 from Aronius, and now I got to see what, what uh, what's going on here, I don't think th this one turned out so hot for me. I don't, don't think it turned out well at all. He's got all kinds of weird threats here. So if I go, let's say I go bishop takes b7. Bishop to d3 or something. I don't know. I mean, 
if I have to go bishop c1, I, I you know, I, I think I'm just down a pawn, but all right, I, I'm going to go bishop to c1. He uh, came, he played this very well. I'm going to, you know, this is the problem with these openings at white is that this kind of stuff could happen. And uh, I think he did a pretty good job. All right. Uh, Nicholas Moeller, what's happening here? Bishop takes g6, I'm looking at. I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it might in some way release the tension too much. Bishop takes g6 and his knight on d7 is hanging. He could mess up my pawns. It feels like it's the right thing to do, so I'm, I'm going to do it. His knight on d7 is hanging. So bishop takes g6. It is. And now from uh, Arturo Gandhi, pawn takes. Time pressure looks not so bad for me yet. Uh, okay, Pascalino, bishop to c6. I wonder what 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 is that move up to? I'm thinking I'm thinking that I'm going to go h4 here and try and open up his king side. So that that game is about to become very exciting. Bishop d6 from Shorty, and I'm going to go bishop to g3 and face that bishop there. Knight b8 from Lithos. I don't know where where, where is his, where is that knight going. Um, also, well, he w probably wants to protect against Saxon on g6. So, all right. So I'm just gonna go. I'm, I mean, I'm wondering if if I should ever go f4. And you know, and see what kind of deal with that is. Maybe just maybe I should just go. Let me go rookie two in case I I can get some pressure against the e pawn. So I'm just going to go rookie, rookie two. Uh, let's see. So um, rookie eight from Jester. And now let's see. I'm having some fun here chasing his queen around. I don't really know what it's doing. So let's see. If I go bishop to a6. G5 from Contras. Mm-hmm. And Luxeterna. Now, at some point, this game might just become some slight edge for me. You know, anticipating some kind of, you know, change of the position. Okay, so 95... From uh, okay, now we have to see. Doh is is at what point is he going to do something to me? All right, I'm just going to go knight back to e5, and then I'm going to try to defend myself some. All right, now uh, queen. What what's it? What's the right way to do this against Mister Neil? Queen f6 check. Don't know. Knight h7. Uh, rook f3. I think I'm going to go knight h7 because it may, his rook has to go. Bishop c8 from Lithos. Okay. Uh, and do I want to take that off? Let me take that. G takes h4. The contrast game we're just playing, but I think it's a dead draw. Doubling rooks from DLH, and then I, I'm going to go rook to... Now I have to be—I I suppose I have to be a little careful here about this. I'm, I'm thinking about f4 stuff, and then he goes knight e4. I take. He takes with some pawn, and then if I could trade all the rooks, I could be positionally better there, right? So let me let me try f4. I mean, I got a little greedy in this game, so I, I um, we'll see what happens. Yep, G, uh, now, Vadim, I'm just going to look at rook takes f7. It doesn't work. So that, that, that doesn't work. Now, now I'm getting back to more normal looking moves, like, uh, like knight to e4 or something like that. Yeah, knight to e4 looks, looks, uh, looks decent. Okay, so now Jester has gone queen d8, and now I'm, I don't know, I'm going to chase his queen some more with bishop to a5. Rook c8 from 
And now I guess I'll just go bishop takes knight against. So I so I got some, you know, some good games going on here. Okay, g4 from Pascalino, and now I have knight e5 with a tempo. And Arturo Ganchi, so Simo's been going on for a little more than an hour. Uh, I think I have one decisive result. And now, okay, let's see what let's see what to do against this uh, or Arturo. Um, let's see, I can go queen. To, let me go knight to a four, and see where he puts his queen. All right, now um, Nicholas Muller does knight d six win the exchange for me. With those. Okay, took back with the queen, and if I go knight to f5, somehow, when do I, when do I play f4? All right, I'm going to go knight to f5. Bishop takes knight from shorty. I'm surprised about that, because I, 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 like, I, I think my dark squared bishop might get annoying later on. Okay, bishop a4 from Pascalino. Mm-hmm. So, and now, I guess I'll just go bishop to c2. Looks like a sane move. It's like a Seinfeld episode. It's the sane thing to do. Okay, and now, back to the erroneous game, which is the game where I, I think it might be the only game where I'm, I'm not at least okay. Uh, knight h5 from Shorty, so Shorty wants my bishop. I say, okay. And now, if if he takes my bishop in some way, I'm I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking knight to e2 looks like a good move for me. All right, Zeboil, uh, Zeboil, can I castle and lose my e pawn, but then I get a rook e1? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it looks like, I don't know, Contrast, we should probably just make a draw here somehow. I think I'm just going to go King G3. He'll take on on B2. I take on A5, and a draw looks like a really the right thing to do there. All right, now hold on. Um, what happened here, this is this is two pieces for a rook against... Chester, is that is that what what is going on here? If I put h4 in first, where does his queen go? Let me put in h4 first, and then take the bishop after. Knight g4 from from Pearl Hacker, huh? Trying to see if I could if if there's any way for me to to just really bother him on the e6 square. Okay, uh, bishop to d7 from Mr. Neal. Okay, and now I guess I'll go check. Looks turn has played rook to d7. His position's looking, it's getting a little uncomfortable for him there. But I don't have any clear shots yet that are going to win. Um, Let's just suppose I play, I don't know, is he trying to double rooks is a good question. Uh... That, that's that's a very good question. Does he just want to double rooks and move his knight? But all right, I'm just going to go a3 and try and expand on the queen side. Knight d8 after my pawn. Um, Talikin is after my pawn. Con oh, Contras adjourned. Yes, uh, sorry. Okay. And um, I don't know. I'm going to offer Contras a draw. And let's see. So what's happened with Talikin? Is, is he after my pawn? Can... Do I want to go a4? Okay, now we got to see against Lithos. What's what's the story here? <sighs> Something that takes an f4. All right, I'm going to take on d6 and go f4 and see if I can crack him. All 
All right. Knight, a simple knight f7 was played by dlh. Now, I, I guess I'll go bishop to f3. All right, f4 from Lithos, trying to crack him on that e5 square. h6 from Zebile, who is, let's see, uh, oh, that's a good move. I, 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 you know, not only when he takes on e2, I have a problem. When he takes on e2, he's forking my rooks. Like some people said, I, I did not see that. So that's going to be a real situation. So I did not pay attention there. And what can I do about it? h6 is a good move. Well, I'm going to try. I, I mean, I'm, I'm in too deep now. I'm going to try bishop h4. All right, now, Jester's queen is really wound up in some kind of place, and, and if I just take d7, am I up a piece? And let's see, dlh. My c pawn could be very useful. I'm happy about that. I Should I just take on f7 and try and trade some rooks? I think so. All right, now, with those, what does he do if I, let's say I try to triple... Um, on on the file, do I want to put my rooks in front? Of, let, let's say I go rook e4, then rook e3, then pawn takes, something like that. Um, and and if ever f5, I just take on e5. So let me go. Let me try rook to e4, and get on with that kind of stuff. Okay. So, Mr. Neal has played. Knight to d4, and what's the what is the threat here? If let's see, uh, um, I'm thinking if I just go knight takes the queen to I don't know queen to h8 is weird. Rook to c7 feels like it's the right move, doesn't it? Rook to rook to c7 definitely feels like it's the right move. And then I have to look. Does he have any checks, ways to bother me? All right, I'm going to go rook to c7. Okay, uh, b4 from Erroneous. Very good. You know, I mean, I think he's absolutely playing correctly here. And, and I'm looking for ways to, to bail myself out of this mess. Um, I, I don't know. I mean... Okay, I, I guess I'll try bishop to d5 just to load up and see if there's some kind of purpose to this. Hope to get, you know, maybe maybe I'll get lucky, who knows. Um, and now, all right, f4 from sm small masters defending well. Small, small masters defending very well in this in this game. Shorty, queen to d6. And I don't know. I guess uh, I'll just play some kind of move like h4, make some air for my Ken. Can I trade off all the rooks against dlh and then bother him with the c pawn? I'm going to try that. And Zebile, Zebile has played what we thought. And now, I don't know. Does, I, how is this going to turn out for me? Because I can put bishop takes e7 in the middle of it. But then, okay, uh, no, all right, I'm going to try rook on f to e1. Rook to g1. Bishop to d6 from Aronius looks like it's, looks like it's a good move. Now I have to see, um... Any any tricky stuff with something like knight to c6? I think he's just up a solid pawn here. You know, I I I, I think he's just up a solid pawn, um, and maybe he's trying to play a4 at some point or something. All right, I'm going to try desperation here, pawn to e4 myself. And Doctor Strange move. All right. 
One thing I got, one thing the Doctor Strange move has to be careful of is it's got it's like a huge pile up on the C file here. I mean, I mean, are there any chances for me to work on, you know, to get some pin action going, you know, with something like ninety four and Rook C one or something like that? So, you know, some some kind of question like that it is probably going to be answered soon. All right, knight, let let me go knight to E four first. And now, Rook C8 from from Pasqualino, and and if I just go pawn takes pawn, it, it, am I going to win a piece on with pawn to B4 soon? Rook C7 from okay, Luxaturna. I'm just trying to keep him from from moving stuff here. Is 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 he trying to break out with C5? I don't think so. I. I'm going to go h5 myself. So these games, all right, Vadim, I'm trying to figure out how to how to how to blast Vadim's queen you know, king side open. Queen g4 getting closer, looks good, no forks, okay. Um Talkin has gone queen c4 and I guess I'll just go d5, guard my pawn. Zebile has gone. Bishop takes f3. All right. Well, so now here's the bad news. Bishop takes f3. He maybe does that. And if I put in bishop takes e7, I think that I'm coming out down a piece in this mess here. So I'm going to try bishop takes f3 and just see what happens a little bit. Rook C8 from, from Mr. Neal, and now um, Rook takes D7. What does he have? Some check? I don't understand. I'll just go Rook takes D7, and that looks, I think uh, that looks pretty winning for me. Okay, and now, um, good, good question here. I got a heck of a pawn wall going against, um, against Talikin. Uh If I go pawn to B3, and just move my rook. I'm wondering if I could pry him open later on. So I'm going to try that. Knight to d4 from Pearl Hacker. Uh huh. And now this was the game I was trying to collapse him on the e6 square, but I, I don't really see a uh, see a good way to do it. Can I just go pawn to b4 here and you know gain some space? Maybe not collapse him. Not really worry about collapsing him so much. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, 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 I think Zebal has played very well. He played G5, uh, and he's gonna win a piece. And now it's up to me. I have to see if I could create some problems on H7 square or something like that. It doesn't feel like it, but if I was going to do this, what's what? What would be the right start for me? Uh, Rook maybe. I'm not the B7 pawn. Pawns don't even matter to me anymore. I'm just going to have to try an attack here. I'm going to try, let's say, rook to e4. Okay, Vadim has played a good defensive move. Queen to e7, and now I got to look uh, for tricks. Uh, Maybe I maybe I double rooks on the F file. Okay, Arturo has retreated Queen C seven, then I'm gonna go knight takes C five. I feel like I did the job there, at least opened up the position some. Okay, what's going on in these Dutch defenses? Okay, ninety two check. I move my king from Mr. Neal. And is that game just about over is a good question. Uh is Litos threatening to go F five? Hmm. And 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 he's also defending his rook on E eight, so I think I'm gonna go Queen E two. Okay, now Talakin has gone B5, but 
if I go queen e2, can I can I try to annoy him a little bit? I'm going to try this queen e2. Try to pin him and bother him a little bit. Maybe maybe I can win a pawn. Okay, uh, c6 from Zebal. He's trying to keep everything. Why not? Why not? All right, I'm going to try. Let's see. How, how, how can I drum up some business here? I'm going to try queen to c1 and try to sack straight out. Bishop d7 from shorty, solid. Bishop d3, I'm trying to see what's what's going on here. Is he ever going, is he ever going to go knight e6? All right, I'm going to go pawn to b4. Okay, looks to turn, uh, very interesting business here. His queen is there. I mean, do I, I mean, are there queen trades? When do I want to go knight to d6? I'm going to do offer him a queen trade on on uh, g5 and see because that looks nice. All right, knight e5 from erroneous. Uh huh. And I guess I just have to move my queen to e2. I'm down a pawn there for nothing. h5 from dlh. Now, if I if I force queens off here, I think I'm winning pretty easy. So, how do I want to do this? Bishop to g2. Pushing the C pawn, I just have to make sure I don't get mated on F1 with Queen to G3, for instance. Okay, so I'm looking at Queen to G2 is the first thing. So either Queen to G2 is the is, is good. I like that. All right, and now let's see. So I wanted to collapse Pearl Hacker on on E6, but I'm still not doing it. All right, let me try it. Uh, pawn takes pawn. Okay, solid play from small master. Rook to c7, uh-huh, and he's probably going to try for c5 at the at the proper moment. So let me bring my king up too. Zebal has gone e6. It's a good move, stopping the sacrifice. And now... I got to figure out what uh, in, in what way can I dig up some compensation here. I'm gonna all right. Let me try Bishop two, e two, maybe point the pieces at him or something. Okay. Uh, now Talikin, I'm really trying to open up his king here. Uh, let's see. Um, if I take, to, well, I'm gonna take on f five. And Erroneous has played good move. Looks like a good move. E6. Where does my bishop go in here? So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna have to go for desperation with F4. All right. Lithos is forcing me to sack the exchange, or is he? What if I go bishop takes E5? Bishop takes E5. I can do. And let's see here. Uh, just C5 is coming. Now, when C5 happens in this game with with small mouse, I have to be ready for something. Okay, I think I'm going to go for E4 and try and take some space like that. King to d8 from Lux, King to g8 from Lux turn mm -hmm. and now all right, I'll just go right back to e4. I think I have a good bind in that position. All right, Talakin is sacking his king side uh, for past pawns. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that Carlson game the other day against an end. Uh, so let me see. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Queen h. All right, I'm going to go pawn takes. And then try and mate him before he does something to me. Okay, Queen E7 from Shorty. Uh, let's see. So that move attacks two pawns. So 
I, I, I mean, it, it's, 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 is, is he going to win a pawn here? Is it, is a question. All right, I'm going to try knight to, knight to d3. And I don't understand what Lithos just did. I think he just hung his queen. And Erroneous is is going to be up some 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 material with the bishop pair. I'm going to play this a little while longer, but I think it's already. I, I think I can already pretty much resign. A queen trade offer from Vadim. It messes up his pawn structure. Hmm. Don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking about Queen H4 kind of stuff. I think I'm gonna. It's tempting to do that, but his knight on d5 is so strong that that you know that's the that becomes the question. So let me go uh, queen to h4. Well, with those is uh, uh, oh, so what's the deal here? He's got a rook and a knight, but I I don't know. My past d pawn's got to be good for something. Also, why don't I just go after his e-pawn right away? All right, now, um, what is uh, D DLH trying to do to me here? Um, if I go, let's say I go queen to g6, and I take a lot of pawns with check. All right, I'm going to try that. Queen g6 and take some pawns with check. Let's see how that happens. Okay, uh, erroneous. Well, about the best thing I could say in the erroneous game is, well, I'm down a million pawns. And I have a strong knight, but, I mean, it's just it's just lost. Queen d2. All right, rook, rook d3 from from Shorty, and Shorty has snatched a pawn from me. But I mean, I'm still li still living. Um, knight c5 ideas sometimes, you know, bother, bother his pawns. I I don't think I should lose here. I don't think I'm going to win, but I don't think I should lose. Okay, now I'm going to take pawns with check against D O H. All right, all we're going with check, and then I'll try. And return my queen back to where it came from. And we'll see how that goes. Yep, bishop to c8. And now I'm looking at, I don't know, I'm wondering about bishop to d3. Um, try, try and snatch a pawn. All right, a lot of pawns going with check in the DLH game. But the question is, his queenie one threat is keeping him alive. Okay, Zeboy was just not, not is, is, is leaving that bishop there for a long time. Uh -huh. Okay, so he just did queen d5. And I guess I'll go, I don't know, if I go bishop to f3, let me go bishop uh, d3. It's not, I, I, I think it's just lost there. Okay, queen check from that one, and now I'm going to go queen h6 check. As long as I keep checking, he doesn't do queen e1 to me. All right, now, Talikin. Man, his, can I just go queen takes h, I'm going to try queen h5 and bishop takes h6 and see if I, I, that's the straightforward approach. King g7, I'm going to, I'm going to, Double rooks on Vadim. Uh, Lithos has gone rook to e8. I feel like I'm just winning pretty easily here. I just have to, I don't know, do some safe moves. Maybe make my king position better, get my king up to f3. So I feel like that one's good. f5 from Zeboil. And I'm going to try to mix it up with c4. What do I got to lose here? And small master, let's see what this, what kind of ending we're in here. And 
Lots of pawns coming down from Talakin. Okay, if I, so if I go, all right, I'm going to go bishop takes h6. And let's see, so I, I'm still trying to collapse e6 in, in this pearl hacker game with, without too much success. So now, I mean, uh, I, I don't know if, uh, if, if I go bishop to g5, what does that do? Pawn to f4. Is in point to f four is interesting because I mean maybe he can't take on c four so that could that could be good. Bishop d eight from Vadim, mm -hmm. and I guess I'll go queen to f two. The tripling looks nice, and Talakine with queen to d four, and if I go bishop to e three. What happens? Mm -hmm. Is that why I was uh, just going to take my bishop? And and how how can I drum up any attack here? Don't really see what to do. Rook, rook back to I don't know, rook back to e two. This is lost. Probably can give this one up. And Shorty's gone knight to g six. So I'm just wondering in, in in my game with Shorty if if I take a six, if my pass pawns get to bother him at all before he tries to mate me. Rook f five uh, from um, Talkin, and then I guess I'll just go. Queen h7 check. Looks at Turner. What at what moments can I do something to him? He's just is he really going to just move his king back and forth? Might. Okay, bishop to f3. Just try and consolidate my game. Uh, let's see. Uh, h3 from. Against Lithos. Yeah, I, I mean the Zebal game. I think I can, I, I can give that one up with a pretty clear conscience there. Uh huh. Doctor Strange moved. This game I forgot all about. We've been there's been so much thinking going on. All right, what? Let me try Rook to C one. And like I said, I was. Trying for some pin stuff, so let's see if we could do it. Yeah, I think I'm going to resign again, Zebo. I think that one's done. So, uh, so good opening and a uh, you know and a good game there. Not not you know not bad at all. Okay, Luxeterna is what's he getting ready to do here? I'm wondering if I ever do I ever want to drop into D D six. What moment will, would I drop into D six? Also, all right. I'm gonna. I don't know what my rook is doing on E one, so I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna put it on D one, I guess. Okay, what's happening? My bishops look nice against Ar Arturito. Uh Do I want? Let's see. He's threatening my my pawn, so do I want to double rooks? All right, I guess double rooks on the D file looks good. Um, Talakin is down a lot of stuff. He's got some past pawns though, but but my God, I have a rook also. I'm I'm up. I didn't realize how much stuff I was up here. Okay, so I I think I can give some stuff back here, and and I think that's what I'm going to do to uh, just just to 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 get that going. So now I'm I'm on the Lux to turn the game, and uh, all right, Talakin, I'm I'm up so much stuff. I'm just going to sack a rook back just to get rid of his pass pawn and 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 see what the deal is there. Okay, so let me see. Uh, queen to d3, and then just take that pawn, and then once I get rid of that pawn, I got to be happy. Uh, small master, what is this? What's the deal with this rook ending here? My king, I, I guess I'll come up with my king and use try to use my four to three. 
Okay, looks like a uh, good move from Arturo. It's just going to keep my, you know, just try to defend, keep my rooks from coming in. Uh, Vadim, let's see. Uh, I, I, now, Vadim played knight on seven to b6. I, I don't know about that move. What happens now? I, knight c5 looks kind of nice for me with that tripling, and maybe I can, maybe I have some sacrifices working here. All right, and now also in the game with with Pearl Hacker, can I collapse him anywhere? All right, I'm going to take on d5. I've been trying to collapse him on e6 the whole game without much success. Bishop to b2. Bishop takes b2 from Dr. Strange move. What's happening with if I go bishop takes... No, he just not he, he he snatches a pawn. So let's see. Bishop takes bishop, and he takes that. So, hmm. That's uh, you know I, I I I it's 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 looks like it's not a bad move. Just rook to c one. Bishop takes b two. He has. Uh, can I play rook to b one? Where will he go then? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I thought I this was going to be good for me, but then all of a sudden he comes up with this shot. Bishop takes c4. I can't do that. I mean, bishop c1, bishop takes, takes back with a pawn. So I so it looks like I, I have to go rook to b1 or rook to d1. I'm going to go rook to b1, and then I got to see if I could uh, drum up some business here. All right, uh, Arturo Gatti, uh, let's see, can I go pawn to a4? And see what about that. All right, the the, the Lux to turn the game is just an in, incredible maneuver in game. I mean, I don't know if I'm ever going to decide to break through here. Um, let's see. I I thought that I thought that I was on a good square when I was on d1, but now... I don't know. Rook to e1 might just be the right place for the rook. Knight e4 from Lithos, and I was going to go queen to a3 and try and get my uh, get my queen into his position from the side. All right, queen to a3. All right, now uh, any fanciness in the, in the Vadim game? Um, Bishop takes g6, for instance. King takes rook check. Hmm. Don't 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 see anything clear here. Rook g three straight out. Queen g three. Some kind of threats. Bishop takes g six. Really feels like it's the right thing to do though. But I, I I'm not sure that I'm I'm making it work the right way. What? I don't know, minute 10 or something. So let's see here. Rook, and, and, and now, knight, to, knight back, rook to... Let me try rook to g3. Let's see if I can set up some some sacks like that. a5 from Lux Eterna. Man, I, I, that one doesn't feel right to me because it's opening up another side for me. So let me go pawn takes pawn and get a square. Okay, small master's king is coming over, but I don't know. I'm going to go rook to d1 check and stop him from going over. And now, what is what, what is a good move for me here in the pearl hacker game? Knight c6. Does that work? Rook takes, queen takes d5. I think it works, and it looks nice. Okay, knight c5 for Lux to turn uh, And erroneous is just all over me here. I, I I don't know if I have any chances. I'm looking. I don't. You know. I mean, it's it's just it's just pretty bad. I, he's threatening to take another pawn. Bishop takes h3. Queen takes d5. Big deal for me. Uh, trading rooks down. Trading everything down three pawns doesn't seem like a fun thing to do. All right, I'm going to try queen f2, but, you know, just just uh, dragging it out, really.
Now, I don't want to really, I, I don't want to take this bishop in the looks of turn again, but I think I should go bishop takes knight and get rid of that knight finally. Okay, now let me think what to do here against uh, small master. Rook to something. Rook, rook to b1 looks right. Queen takes d5. All right, bishop to a3 from Doctor Strange move, keeping all of his stuff. It it, it seems like the right thing to do, and I, I think I'm going to go bishop to g3 and just maybe try to get him on some diagonal business. Okay, uh, Lithos has played a good move. Knight d6 shuts my queen out, um, and I'm I'm just gonna go a3 and try and hit him with b4 and open him up like that. Okay, pawn takes d5 from Luxaturna, so I have a very strong knight on on uh, c5, and then I'm just gonna see if I could switch to the b file and and bother him a little bit. Rook c7 from small master. And I guess I'll just go, when do I start pushing my king side pawns is, is what I'm wondering. Okay, let me go king to, well, let me go pawn to g4 and get on with those guys. Okay, uh, pro hacker has gone king f8. Now I have a few ways to do this. Taking the rook's got to be right. All right, and now uh, let's see what's happening here. Shorty, pawns are even, and I have a pass A pawn. I guess I'm going to try to bother him with that A pawn. Aha, I see. Okay, so now Lithos has, uh, has, has, is defending nice with rook c7. I'm going to bring my king over. Time looks not so bad for me in these games. Uh, usually in these simuls, I think I think the last month was my best one when I lost three games. I think I think that one was my best one. Uh, let's see. So Bishop to B three from Arthur Ar Ar Gotti. Okay, now I thought I was going to go Rook to D seven in these game in these variations, but. Maybe he could. He might be able to sack his queen. I, all right, I'm going to try. I. I, I went into it, so I thought I was doing rook to d7, so I'm going to do it. Okay, uh, pearl hacker, bishop takes b4, and I was just going to go queen takes c4. Threatening mate on f7, I think. Okay, Luxaturna is... Now, Luxaturna's bishop is really bad in this kind of position, so uh, I, I think I'm just going to double rook safely with, with rook to b2. And his king looks looks like it's in a dangerous situation also. F6, Aroni is taking his time, absolutely. And rook to b8 from um, Vadim. Okay, Vadim is, is is hanging on okay here. Except I'm, I'm looking at e6 now. e6, what is, what is the deal with e6? Hmm. Don't know. Um, can't really figure out what he's doing. All right, I'm, I, maybe maybe my knight has done its job, and then we'll come back to e4. Shorty, uh, let's see, pawns are even. I have a pass a pawn. I, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm looking at stuff like knight to b8. Feels like, feels like it should be a draw this game. F5 from Dr. Strange move. Mm-hmm. And now, let's see. I, I was looking at all kinds of weird stuff here. Queen to c3. And where does he go? All right, I'm going to try queen to c3. 
H6 from Litho. So I'm just, uh, okay, now I, I'm just going to hang out here. And if I ever get B4, and also, I don't know, maybe a, maybe my easiest plan is A5, A4. I really didn't want to do that to my queen, but I think my queen is okay. It would be embarrassing if it got trapped. So I think I can go A, A4, A5 and pry them open like that. Yep, knight to d3. Yep, knight to d3 from from shorty. And let me see. So I go rook takes. He goes knight takes. King king f7 from small master. Mm -hmm. And now I gotta make sure he doesn't have any g5 kind of stuff. Uh, do I want to come up with my king? I think maybe a4 is a good move for me. Aroni is just hanging on. I'm just moving back and forth also. Uh, Shorty has played. He took my B pawn. I still have my A pawn that I'm going to try to bother him with. So I'm going to go rook to B6, try and get my pawn to E6. Knight D7. Okay, now I feel like knight to D6 finally against Vadim. I, I, I've achieved the winning position. All right, uh, Lit Litos just gave me another pawn on a7, so that should probably do it for that. And bishop to e7 was played by Ar Ar Arthagandi, and that looks like a good move for him. So, uh, and, and I, so that's going to be an inadvertent exchange sack again for me. So queen b6. Lux Eterna is getting worked over with the uh, with the bishop and the knight. I think in this position, I think he's, this is going to be very hard for him. Okay, knight knight c two. Now I'm going to try and bother uh, Shorty with my a pawn, and and you know he's got to be really careful. He's got the d pawn, but the a pawn is going in fast. All right, uh, bishop. In, in interesting business now has occurred here in the game with Doctor Strange move. Okay, I take on C4 and then take on A3 and I don't know. All right, so Lux Eterna is uh, blocked with Bishop to E8 and now A good bishop versus it's it's really a good knight versus a bad bishop for sure here. Um, I want to keep his rook all bottled up. I think I think I should go g4 and maybe start bringing my king around on the other side. Okay, a small master has played h5, and I guess I just go h3. Keep those guys where they are. Pawn to d4 from shorty. Mm -hmm. And now, okay, I got to calculate here. Knight a6. Knight a6, d3. Okay, knight a6. Knight c6. And then a7 or something. Okay, Lux Eterna, what's happening now? a4. I could take that pawn, but why should I let his rook in? So I'm going to come come up with my king into f6, maybe. Bishop c7, did Vadim just lose his queen with knight f5 check? Okay, I'm still dragging the erroneous game out. I, I've played a respectable number of moves, and probably I should resign, but I don't know, still going for some reason. But not not going well. Okay, King E seven from Lux Eterna, and now, man, I could trade rooks. I could trade rooks, but I could trade the rooks any time. So, 
If my king went to g5, all right, I'm going to I'm going to bring my king over towards the queen's side now. Just not going to let his rook into the game. Okay, so what's happening? My king is safe against Arturito Galacti, and uh, so that's good news. But the bad news is down the exchange. But uh, I'm gonna maybe I can pry open his queen side a little bit. Okay, now I'm coming over with my king some more in the Lux Eterna game. Good knight versus bad bishop. All right, now uh, let's see what's happening here. Pawn to a7 for Shorty against Shorty. Rook a5 from Lux Eterna. Uh -huh. So now what is, is, is he the one that's trying to trade rooks on b5? All right, king, king to uh, d2. Uh, small master is pushing his pawn. I guess I have to block it. And Lux Eterna does want to trade the rooks, but I, I don't know. Isn't this pretty easy for me? Rook takes rook. And then my king just comes up to b4, so then I'll go g5 and just bring my king up to b4. It seemed like that was a positional kind of game for me the whole time where I was, you know, in, in, in pretty nice shape with that. So I'll be on with John Spielman Monday for the uh, for the Zurich tournament. All right, uh, Dr. Strange move has gone Bishop C4, and now what do I have here? I'll, I'll take on A3. And... Our Torito Gotti has gone bishop to d6. Looks like a good move. I'll go bishop to g5. Draw. D2 check from Shorty. I go rook check and then go behind. And he goes knight. Knight to e3, uh-huh. So now, on rook takes, he has check and knight f1. I might, let's see, did I overdo it? I think, I, yep, that was a nice trick on his part. So he wins my rook. So probably in that game, I got a little greedy. I should have just, I should have just made the draw. Um, let's see, do, is, is there, are there any, uh, is there any other hope here? I don't think so. He's just getting rook check, king up, and knight f1. That's that, that was that was a nice one on his part. So, what can I do here? So I think uh, I I I think that he got me there with a nice, ver very nice trick. Uh, but you know, I probably I don't know the way to play that game. I have to just make a draw there. So I'll take this, and it's going to be a loss. And. I think I, I, I can't keep track, but I think I'm heading for my worst time. Uh, um, so it feels like maybe five losses. Okay. Um, Tiro Gotti trying to pry open the queen side, but hanging is too much stuff today is, is the story. So good game from Shorty. Uh, probably shouldn't have lost there, but uh, get too greedy and miss something. That's the way it goes. Uh, good defense from Small Master. Small mouse, they're probably just a, another rook ending that's a draw. I guess I'll give him a check. Queen takes e4 from Dr. Strange move. Uh, hitting um, hitting my rook. Okay, now, let's see. What, what kind of ideas do I have here? Queen to c5 check. Maybe I, let's see. If I, if I just go rook to c1, what happens? Rook to c1, what happens there? Queen c5, check. And if he goes queen c6, can I take a7? And if he and if he goes king to d7, does that look right, like the right way to win for him? All right, I'm going to go queen to c5. And I don't know. It, 
it seems like that game has gotten more messed up than it should have. Okay, so now how do I want to do this against Small Master? Should I just keep on checking him and make a draw? Uh, I don't. Well, his king's on the back rank. Well, can that be worth something? Let me. If I well, I just lost a rook ending there, so I don't know if I should go for another one. Rook takes pawn. Rook f4, a5, a6. Does he have time to tell? All right, I'm going to go a little bit with this. Rook takes a7. Okay, king to Dr. Strange move has gone king to d7. Mm-hmm. And I get queen c7, big deal. So I can move my rook, to, if I move my rook to c1... Okay, let me go rook c1. Uh, Erroneous is uh, still conti is continuing to be up three pawns. Pawn to b5 from Doctor Strange move. Okay. And now let's see. So I take, okay, if I take a7... My problem now is that my, my my bishop is a little bit weird. Um, do I do I ever want to go rook? To, let, let's say, do I ever want to go f three? Okay, suppose I'm I'm going to try f three. Get my bishop back to f two and see how that goes. All right, so small master. I get, let's see if I get my pawn to a six. I don't know, pawn to g5, rook there, pawn, looking at going g5, but uh, I, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't really uh, believe it at all, you know, I mean, I mean, it, it, it would just be, rook, rook probably takes the e pawn, rook e4, a5, rook takes a6, and then goes, and then goes behind, probably, probably should just be a draw. So should I check him a lot? But I don't know if checking him makes sense. All right, I'm going to go a5, and I think I'm just going to offer a draw there shortly. I mean, that's not, you know, no, 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 nothing big happening there for me, that's for sure. Okay, so Dr. Strange move is going to be up some pawns, but it's going to be a bishop opposite color position. So what is that like? Okay, now, is he is he threatening to trade the queens on b6? If he trades the queens on b6, what's happening there? Let me go. Let me go. Bishop to f2 and keep him from doing that. Okay, so he got his king out of the way. But, you know, I mean, the good news to me is that I'm bothering him here a little bit, right? Uh, more, You know, more than I used to. So I'm thinking about moves like queen to e3. I mean, there's, at least I'm having some stuff on the board here. I don't want to go queen takes a7. Bishop opposite colors down a pawn. Rook's on is not going to be much fun. So I'm, I'm not getting involved in any of that. So, but queen to e3 to soften up his king's side. Let me try queen to e3. Rook a4 from small master, yep. And uh, and and I assume, okay, let me just, I'm going to take his pawn and offer him a draw. draw. Another rook ending, another draw. G5 from Dr. Strange move, okay, so at least I'm loosening him up some. Okay, now I'm going to, now I'm, I'm checking queen e5. Uh, just ran, you know, just running around attacking pawns here. Uh, let's see. Arturito has offered me a trade on e7. Uh, should I take on c6 first? Let me take on c6. Queen d5 
from Doctor Strange move, and I'm I mean I'm thinking I go Queen H eight and take a pawn. He's uh, he's in, in he's actually in in uh, got himself into time pressure. Okay, and now let's see if against Arturito. I think I'm okay in this game because I feel like I'm his C pawn is going, so I think I'm gonna be okay. So I'm just gonna go Bishop to F. Maybe, maybe, yeah, bishop to f4 looks okay. Erroneous. Man, I, I, I should apologize to the guy for dragging this out. But sometimes you just keep playing and and playing and playing and what the heck, right? All right, snatch a pawn from Dr. Strange move. Was a tough simul today. I mean, my Gruner... My Grunfeld uh, ran into trouble today. In in uh, in, and it looks like two of the losses will be the Grunfelds. So I, that's that really ran into trouble with that. Okay, Doctor Strange move. I feel like my stuff is protected here, and his king's a little open. So I'm fighting all right in this game. Down a pawn, Bishop opposite colors. My king is safer than his. Rook to c3, erroneous is, yep, just t taking his time here. Um, certainly the right thing to do. Okay, queen d2 from Dr. Strange move. <coughs> so how do I want to do this? Uh, do I want to check him at all? Do I want to go rook to e1? Let's see, if I check him on h7. Yeah, let me, let me check him on h7 one time because... I mean, maybe maybe I'm getting uh, F5 with check sometimes. He had to have a better way to do this because his king, you know, his king was got a little weird there. And and that's the and, and okay. Uh, all right, so. So we got a. I, so I checked Doctor Strange move one time, and then he played King up. So now, let's see. Do I want to check him again and then go rookie one, or or do I go rookie one straight and often does do these moves even do anything? Uh, okay, I'm gonna go rookie one. Bother the e seven pawn. Maybe I snatch a seven or something like that, and. You know, no pass pawns for him, or or h4 to open up his king from the side. I mean, I think I'm okay here. Bishop opposite colors are crazy positions. It's usually who's ever attacking, and my king on g1, it looks nice, and his king on f6 looks a little bit uh, shaky. Bishop to e2. Bishop to e2 shuts down the rook. But does it get into? Uh, but but what other situation does does it open up here? Um, H four. I'm going to try to put the pressure on him here with the, with 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 the, with, with the time pressure. See what see if I could open him up. King e seven from erroneous. Uh huh. Man, I don't know what what I'm looking for in this position. I, mean, just, I, I think I'm just going to resign. I, I dragged that one out far too long. I mean, I was three pawns down for a very long time. That was just uh, that, that that was just pretty ridiculous. Okay, um, Arturo in the Dutch defense with Arturito defended all right in this game. Um, I think I should probably just. You know, I, I, I mean, if, if I go rook takes c6 or something like that, if I go bishop takes c6, what, what, what happens there? I think I should just take on his bishop and then, and then take, and, and I, I think that should be a fairly simple draw there. Now, uh, Dr. Strange move might have just lost the game because don't I have queen h8 check and take a rook? So I made some decent comebacks in these games.
This was I by far. I think I don't know if it was a, it, it wasn't a, a, a simul that was that higher rated for me, but but it was it, it was a pretty tough simul, uh, uh, probably the toughest simul I've had. Okay, um, I don't know. Should I get all fancy here against Doctor Strange? Move and go H five check. I don't think so. I think I should just take his rook. Uh, Arturo Galani, okay, queen takes c6. One pawn for the exchange, his king is open. I think probably this is just a draw. Um, his king is open, but so what? I think if, if it rook to d8 or something like that, probably this is just a, a pretty dead kind of draw, drawish position. So thanks, everybody. Uh, the time was winding down. Uh, not too bad. Two hours and 15 minutes so far. Sorry for the power outage. I don't know what, what the heck happened there, but uh, came back after a few minutes and everything was okay. So Arthur's got, I have one pawn for the exchange. My king is safe, but I can't do too much with the queen and the bishop. And, and if, and he should be careful if he put his, if he tries to back, well, he really can't back rank mate me because H1 is always covered. So I, I think that's just, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just offer him a draw. He's in a little bit of time pressure, sure. but, you know, I'll just, I'll just offer Arturito a draw and see if he wants it. I, he, he, he I thought he was becoming worse in that Dutch defense, but I think he he found some nice moves. I didn't find the right way to um to keep him from playing e5. So congratulations to the guys that won. That was uh you know some some pretty good games. Although I might have to change my openings. I'm uh, I think it's becoming like a tournament. But people are starting to prepare for me a little bit, so I might have to change some of my openings. Maybe next time I'll play all E4. Uh, uh, good game. Uh, Drew with Ar Arturito. Let's see. Dr. Strange move. Uh, resigned. Uh, let's see. Erroneous. I resigned. Uh, small master. Agreed to a draw. Rook ending. Uh, let's see, Shorty, Shorty did a good back rank trick to me, and, and one, I should have, that's what you get for being greedy in an ending that's probably just a draw. Uh, Lux Eterna, that was a, he, he got into a good night versus a bad bishop position, and just had problems. Uh, Vadim, Vadim was worse the entire time in that exchange, uh, Queen's Gambit decline. He just never found the right way to set up his pieces. Uh, Lithos, um, once I cracked him open with f4, he was under too much pressure. And then eventually uh, that led to him sacking his queen for not enough. Uh, Pearl ha Hacker, thanks for the game also. I found found a way to finally uh, break him down on e6, which seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, Talikin, his his uh, Dutch defense, his king side got torn apart. Zebile played very well and just got on top in the Grunfeld. And, uh, and DLH, I was taking off all of his pawns with check and defending another Dutch defense. And and Mr. Neal just, I, I did a nice combination with bishop takes h7. Uh, Pascalino, man, after he went bishop check king of one, he must have had better than what happened. Because I felt like I would, my pieces were all discombobulated. Uh, Jester got in trouble on the queen side. Another game with, with his Slav where a bishop on c8 just became too much of a problem. Uh, Contouris was just a, a, a regular game. Nothing happened. Just solid play for black. He equalized, and it was a normal draw. And uh, and and I and uh, Nicholas Muller got into all bottled up, gave me the center, and got bottled up. Uh, Triple X, I don't know what happened. I played queen c4 and he, he resigned. And, I, you know, I mean, it's not a bad position for him if he goes rook to f8. Maybe he had somewhere to go. 
and and Kiera Oprin there just uh, got into a bad situation. His E6, he lost his B7 pawn, and that was that was a problem. And uh, so three losses, not so bad. It felt like I lost more actually. So, but thank you everybody. Uh, this is GM John Fedorovich for the ICC and February Simul Master Simul. I hope everybody had a good time. Thanks a lot. Congratulations to Zebal Shorty and Erroneous, and had a good time. See everybody in a month. And uh, enjoy the Zurich coverage, too, in that tournament. And I'll see everybody on Monday, and there's Zurich coverage tomorrow morning. Also, ICC time, I think, 9 o'clock. See everybody on Monday. Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend. Stay warm. Take care. Bye-bye.